Hello everyone, this week we will learn how to do this moody night cityscape painting. Welcome everyone to my home studio where I share my passion for watercolor paintings. My name is Dinesh and this week we will explore the process of creating night paintings, focusing on the technique of layering. In this video, we will explore how to effectively utilize layering to achieve desired effects in our watercolor artworks. Before you go, hit the subscribe button to become a part of our learning community. By subscribing, you will receive weekly upload notifications and stay updated on our artistic journey together. Now without further ado, let's get started everyone. I want to expedite the process, um, so I went ahead and did a quick sketch um, based on our inspiration which is on top right. And I'm starting with the background. For the background, I'm using a lot of blue. And you can see, when I squint my eyes, when we see our reference and as my wash, um, it looks a little bit lighter. It's a really good idea when you do like a really darker painting like this. It's to start uh, from a lighter wash to a, a darker wash. And the other thing I was realizing and I was, um, you know, um, thinking myself and aiding myself is not leaving some eyelids for... Um, the street uh, glow which is on uh, top of our um, a reference uh, sometimes this happens because um, when I want to paint I don't want to think about it I want to paint freely and sometimes I forget to leave eyelets like that but if you're following this tutorial uh, try to leave that eyelets and you can also use masking fluid in this case and I don't use masking fluid because as I said um, whenever I paint I want to paint freely without thinking about it and I'm starting with the building and um, on the top uh, top right and in the mid crown. And again, I would have if I would have done this painting again, um, I would have went a little bit of another wash on the background before I'm adding the building. Uh, but sometimes it's okay to not to do a super dark painting because in watercolors it is really hard to do a darker painting, especially um, with the values like this. So that's why if you see most of the watercolor paintings are really contrast like you know in early morning or early evening or even like really contrast with light and shadows but like painting like this which kind of like have like a most of the same darker value it is hard to control so um, at the background you also see that um, I kept it really minimal and making sure not to uh, overdo it when it comes to background, I'm, I'm not trying to capture each and every details there. I'm trying to uh, think about what shape is it. I'm trying to capture that shape and moving on to the next one. So this is another value which exists in the trims of the uh, in the mid-ground building. And there is only um, the three buildings here, uh, the foreground building, the mid-ground building, and the entire dark building at the back. So you have to think about like there's three big shapes. So I'm starting with the background building, which is underneath it. So I also added some of the wash um, for the windows. This is one of the thing um, when you paint, um, it is you have to think your vision. Uh, if you want to do a really tight painting with uh, specifically like being accurate with your buildings, and you could do that as well. But I want to capture the essence of the building, then capturing each individual details. So the only thing that I'm focusing on would be the streetcar, the person in the foreground and the light which is sitting on the uh, foreground. So these are the essential elements for my scene and rest I'm going to use as like a, a stand-in or a, it's like a backdrop for our painting. And what I'm doing, uh, this will serve as a painting and, um, and if I squint my eyes, you can see that if you squint it, it's just like one dark shape. And I'm also adding some colors uh, in my reference, I'm pretty sure that they added a filters on top of this reference. But in reality, it doesn't look like this. And that's why I'm kind of like putting my own spin on it. And it is essential, um, if you're an artist, um, you should come up with your own colors and own vision and um, own twist on your painting as well. And you can see that I darkened the, made the building darker in the mid-ground building. And then I went and finished uh, some of the details on the top background building as well so now there's a snow so the first wash what we did is it's going just going to act as like under painting or a painting which is underneath it and now i'm doing another value because when i squint my eyes the value is a little bit darker and there's a lot of greenish tone in it and i also want to make sure that the light from the streetcar eating on the ground as well 
and I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting the soft transition from the mid ground to the uh, foreground. So now let's focus on the streetcar. For the streetcar, um, the wash before I did is the color of the light. So on top of it, now I can go and add a, a darker value on top of it. Just by doing that, you can see that we don't have to paint the light. So we're just painting everything in terms of a light and darker values. So sometimes when I see that uh, when I paint, uh, I always think about which is dark and which is lighter and I do my washes accordingly. And this comes by intuition. As you paint more, uh, it gets easier and easier. And now I'm adding the details for the streetcar. I'm making sure that leaving some uh, uh, snow bits on the top of it as well. And there's also light and there's also snow deposit on top of the streetcar. And you can see that uh, the white bit which I added, I just left it as it is. Now I'm adding the darker tone on top of it. And you can see this now, um, it, it's kind of like um, just by uh, layering the light and darker values, we're able to create a shape of a streetcar. So when you paint, that's another thing um, I also always tell my students is to think everything in shapes instead of looking for each individual things. Um, if I'm painting a building, I'll think about what is the shape of the building. Now we layered the first wash for the foreground building. Now I'm going to layer the mid-tone value. Um, I'm just going to add some darker values for uh, the windows. As soon as we can add the uh, darker value on the windows, you could see the window started appearing on our scene. So now I'm adding the uh, person in the foreground. And uh, before I do it, um, I also want to make sure to add those darker values at the bottom of the foreground building as well. And just by adding that, you could see, as soon as we start adding the darker values, um, the building started coming alive. And I'm also using these darker values a little bit different than what in my reference. And I also want to frame the foreground figure um, in our foreground because these are focal point. He is the one who is going to bring uh, us into the painting. So next time I'm also adding the darker values on the, um, the building's bottom. And just by adding that, you can see that, you know, the things started coming alive. Even when I'm painting this, I'm also thinking about my perspective while I paint. I know like when you paint, there's a lot of things you have to keep in mind. And uh, th this does uh, comes in time um, as you paint more, it become intuition. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't make sense when I tell people it comes to intuition, but when you paint more, uh, technically you kind of like develop this muscle memory um, to understand the perspective as well as where the shadows are, where the lighter values, you try to see everything for what it is. So now I'm going to layer another wash on top of the foreground because um, it is a little bit of a darker value and this is going to act as the, um, the shadows uh, for our foreground. And I'm making sure to um, leave some eyelets for the foreground thing. And I'm also trying to combine my the shadows on the ground with the streetcar as well. And since it's a winter scene, it's also going to give this really nice um, feeling as well. And I'm also um, uh, putting some uh, values um, on the lights and let it bleed and does water, wa whatever the watercolor does. And um, and you can see that I'm adding the shadows in the foreground. I'm also mixing a lot of different purples and blues. And I want to make sure that um, this reads really strong. So in watercolors, there's one thing you have to keep in mind that if something needs to glow, you have to make the values around it darker. And you can see that I left some uh, uh, that white values for it. And I'm making the values in the foreground a little bit darker. Uh, since it's wet, I can do uh, all those mixing. And now you can see that as soon as we did it, I think um, the things started appearing on our scene. And there's also this uh, street pole I missed, so I want to bring it back. And that's also going to um, act as a little bit of uh, a perspective detail, uh, which also connects um, to the light, which is on the top as well. These are the secondary details um, adding on top uh, just to get the eyelids back and even on the top of the building. And again, um, I'll keep it, to, keep it to minimal and not to overdo it. So now I'm going to be focusing on the figure uh, who is on the foreground. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on the figure because he's going to be uh, the important part on our scene and making sure to um, get the silhouette as accurate as possible and the details as much as possible. And just by adding that figure, you can see that the figure comes in the front 
and there's also another figure near the street car who is also sitting on the other side i'm also making sure to add that as well and again um, this is what i was talking about um, having the value getting uh, a lighter when i squint my eyes when you see the value of the uh, foreground building uh, my even though when we applied the value in the beginning it looked darker right but as you could see that it got lighter so that's that's the thing about watercolors you have to be really careful about arranging your values but it's okay to start really really on a less value and slowly build up then going on a darker value because in watercolors it is really hard to uh, uh, when you go darker value then it's really hard to uh, get back uh, on a lighter value you could use it there are certain techniques you can use clean water to uh, put a through water on the wash and you can use tissue paper to get it off the paint from it and but that kills the freshness of uh, freshness of the wash of the watercolor so uh, I, that's why i try to uh, layer it in a such a way that i start with low and slowly build up and these are the tertiary details i'm adding on the road so these details i add because i want to know that there's some kind of leading line to take us into the painting and this also enhances perspective as well so that's why i add this uh, lines which is uh, taking us from the figure to the street car so there's kind of like a ping happening from from the figure to the street car and to the person who is sitting behind the street car and when somebody see the uh, somebody see my artwork or see this painting and that's a flow i want them to look at so that's how it's going to work and now I'm adding the darker values for um, the person and you can see as soon as we add them and I'm also making sure to add some shadows on top of it and I forget to add that uh, like the slope uh, where is he walking so I want to make sure to capture that as well I'm trying to fix the foreground value and making it a little bit darker as well it is okay to have your values a little bit lighter than your reference it is fine because what happens is when the picture is taken in a uh, uh, with the camera, it tends to make it darker, the value is darker. But even though well, our reference looks darker, but if you see this uh, exact picture in reality, it doesn't look that darker. And now I'm adding a couple of these um, darker spots, you know, um, on the snow. Uh, this one, I don't like go and sit and uh, paint each individual details. I just splatter some things here and there. Again, I, I don't overdo it. Uh, just to get the texture of it, uh, just telling a story of what is there, and then I move on to the next one. So these are the things you have to be aware of, and uh, and this is the uh, uh, the light which is on the sitting on the foreground. I'm gonna add that as well, and this also bring back some of the value and bring the things which is the foreground as well. Even though the light looks white, uh, I made a little bit uh, uh, warmer as well. I realized that um, when I uh, did this, um, I also made the street light, which is on the top, a little bit um, uh, lighter. Um, again, because I didn't leave some white bits for it, that's why it kind of didn't work. But um, uh, if I want, I'll just go and use a little bit of gouache, um, gouache assistant, and I can go and fix it. But for now, uh, I'll just go with the vision and I'll try to capture whatever I have. And this is the tertiary details. I'm going to add on the street card, try to bring back the eyelets and try to create the 3D look from it. And now I'm realizing that um, the eyelets, which is in the middle of the street car, it's a little bit thinner, but mine is a little bit uh, thicker, but I'll go and fix it later. And I can see, uh, I took like a, a yellow paint out of the tube, trying to make it a little bit bigger. And I'll try to capture whatever I can from it. Just by adding that, you could see I was able to get a little bit of eyelets from it and it kind of worked pretty nice. And there's also this lights, which is also inside the uh, inside the buildings, inside the windows. And it doesn't look dark, uh, doesn't glow because my values on the buildings are a little bit darker. So that's what it happens. So I'm using a little bit of white paint to create a glow from the light, which is coming from it. And I'm using white paint to bring some of the eyelets back. And again, when you do this, try to save this uh, step till the end don't try to rush for this uh, eyelid part in the beginning and wait till the end and this is kind of like you know a little bit of things you just sprinkle on top of a cake to um, have some decorations on it and you don't do the decoration first uh, you create the ingredients and bake the cake and properly and layer with chocolate layer or anything then you add the details uh, the lettering, the font and everything. So it's the exact same thing you have to think about when you're doing painting as well. 
you layer it slowly and you do the washes one by one and that's what I was trying to do and uh, I plan my washes I start from the uh, low value washes and the mid-tone washes and then the darker washes but when it's a contrast painting I usually do the light wash the lights first then I'll add the shadows then I'll add the tertiary details and you can also see that there's a glow which is kind of like happens on uh, on the snow so I'm trying to get that um, uh, glow in the snow because this also you can see that it pops that uh, uh, it pops in the foreground and uh, it just bring back a lot of life in our painting so this is how um, the final painting looks like and um, I try to capture the essence from a reference and you can see that uh, the reference looks a little bit darker and a little bit um, less vibrant it looks super flat with the darker values but I add a little bit of colors in it and we try to capture that light the essence and we also create our own composition and own twist on our painting so now it's your turn uh, take my reference or you can pick your own reference and uh, try to apply the essence uh, what I have thought in this tutorial Thank you once again for watching this painting tutorial. Please feel free to share your thoughts on the comment section below. If you have any other watercolor related topics you would like me to cover, reach out to me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button to become a part of our learning community together. By subscribing, you receive weekly upload notifications and stay updated on our channel and share with your fellow artists, friends and family. And uh, good luck to the painting, folks.